Good morning and welcome to At Home with Hayley. I am, of course, Hayley Andrews. Uh, we are live. Uh, thank you very much for waiting patiently. Um, I know that, uh, firstly, I want to apologise to everyone. I know that notifications went out to say that we started at eight o'clock. That was an admin error. Um, we are, of course, always uh, the first Friday of every month uh, at 9 a.m. Uh, but I apologize for those of you that have been waiting um, and reached out to us. Uh, thank you for letting us know as well. We've managed to get a notification out to as many people as we possibly can. I do anticipate that the numbers on this morning's show will be slightly lower than uh, normal as a result of this admin error. I can only apologize. Of course, all of our videos will go uh, onto our YouTube channel and you will be able to watch the replay. Um, so um, I can see you coming through. If I can just ask you to pop in the chat box that you can hear me loud and clear and then we'll get started and uh, introduce today's guest. So, fantastic. So everybody can hear me. Um, good morning to you. I, I'm going to stall slightly just so that we can get some more people through before we start introducing um, our guest. And um, what an interesting week. Uh, so we've had, we had loads of notifications yesterday. I'll be talking about those in my update. Um, so we have a special guest that's uh, in today talking about his phenomenal platform um, and, um, and tools available to us as investors and developers to help grow our investment portfolio and create uh, opportunities, minimize our risk, uh, do our research properly. So everything that I love um, uh, 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 about uh, property and the industry we are, we are in, our guest is going to cover off with you this morning. Um, so you're in for a real treat. And then, of course, we have our normal market update um, of what's going on in the UK right now, what to expect, etc. Of course, throughout uh, the morning, uh, if you do have any questions, pop your questions in the chat box. We will have um, a dedicated question and answer session. Um, as we do have lower numbers today, participate, ask questions. Uh, we're here to help you and we want you to get the most out of your morning. Um, so if you've got your coffees ready, Start thinking about your questions. I'm going to bring today's guest on. Um, so I'm going to ask um, uh, Hugh Gibbs to join us. <laughs> Good morning, morning everyone. Well, good afternoon, depending where you are. Yes, we've got people <laughs> actually pop in the chat box where you are dialing in from, because we do have people from all over the world that dial in. Um, thank you ever so much for waiting patiently. I am super excited to hear uh, your slot this morning. I know that we had a quick conversation before we went live. Um, so um, I know that the guys and girls are in for a real treat. Um, but do you, for those of you that don't, um, uh, or for those people on the call that don't know who you are, do you want to keep, give a quick uh, small introduction and then we'll get you sharing your screen? Yeah, and, uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, for those that don't know, which is probably quite a few people. Um, so my name's Hugh Gibbs. In fact, let me turn over straight to the slides. It is first thing on a Friday, at least for me. Maybe not for some of you, early birds. Um, right, Hugh Gibbs, that's my name. That's an easy starting point. Um, so I'm actually an ex-town planner uh, and land finder by trade. I wasn't very good at planning, to be perfectly honest. Um, but now it seems to be something that occupies a lot of my time. Um, and so what we're going to be talking about, what I'm going to be talking about today is using permitted development. Um, permitted development to source sites, do your due diligence, and really how to how to add it as another sort of ribbon to your bow. I think if you just specialized in PD, um, you'd probably lose motivation at some point. But uh, it's a very exciting world, especially for those people who like doing research. PD has got you, is, is, is your sort of back. So ex-planner, land finder. Um, I recently set up a company called Searchland which is an off-market site sourcing platform. We don't do the site sourcing, you do the site sourcing. And how we do that is we bring lots and lots and lots of data into one place uh, and then wrap it up in tools and software so that you can actually find sites. So uh, my other three founders who started the company all come from fantastic tech bands, backgrounds. So luckily I don't have to touch any of the tech side. It's purely product and how to use it and how to sort of use it as a planning due diligence tool as well. Um, 
So when talking about myth development, it's always a question of why now. Um, a lot of people don't realize that permitted developments are usually temporary. Um, and it's sort of a, it's sort of a, a reason for governments to say, Hey, this is a problem with housing or a bottleneck. If we apply this PD, we can ease the bottleneck. So, uh, specifically for why now we've got this new use class E that is here to stay. Um, it's often referred to as a super use class. Um, what this means is they've taken lots of scattered use classes and put them into one and they've also had a double win with this and introduced a new use class, which is what everyone's heard of, called Class MA. It's very hard not to say permitted development followed by Class MA. Um, and we'll be getting into the policy incentives around this. And I put costly to get it wrong. That's It's costly to get it wrong in the idea that it should be an easy win. Um, it is a much more affordable application type. Um, but that's sort of the gist of, of PD and why we should talk about it. So. I'm going to try and touch on the context of PD without putting you to sleep. We recently published a guide, which I'm hoping we'll share um, share at the end of this. Uh, so the context of permitted development is always discussed in the context of the housing land, the housing supply shortage or the housing crisis in the UK, in England. Uh, our target is to build 300,000 homes a year. Last, we've never hit that target. Last year, we built, I believe it's 245,000, so 20% less. And permitted development is central government's way of bypassing local councils. They say these buildings are approved in principle. They're very specific. Uh, you don't need to go by the conventional route. The end result is the same. You get planning approval. Um, and yeah, that last point permitted development, always changing. It's always addressing a bottleneck. Uh, also important just to, to note, doesn't just relate to delivery of new homes. It can relate to sort of house builder applications, extensions, things like that. I think the stuff we're probably more excited about uh, delivery of new homes. Um, not so the other stuff can't add value. So let's get some numbers going. Um, on the left, we have our applications handled by PD the last year, uh, known as prior approval. That's the application that goes in. And on the right, we have our old faithful, full planning applications. Now, um, in the last year, uh, so permitted development applications are significantly lower than uh, full applications as to be expected, 17 times less to be uh, precise. Interestingly, and this is why due diligence is so important, the approval rating is lower for permitted development, we would expect it to be much higher. You'd expect it to be 90% plus, it's not, it's 62%. Uh, my reasons for this are purely speculative, but it's it's uh, either um, developers and investors getting it wrong, because you have to be very, your building has to match exactly the right criteria, submit it to the council, the council have their own set of ideas and dismiss it. Um, or it's people putting in a speculative application, knowing that they can always put a full application in afterwards. Um, other benefits, so it's not all doom and gloom, 68 days to decide these applications on average. Uh, that's nearly three, lot, um, blah, 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 three times more for a full application. Um, so I've just seen a comment for how long I'm gonna spend on this. Good to, good to see that already. Uh, I won't be spending more than 20, 30 minutes on permitted development. Um, the second part, which I'm about to get onto, is all about sourcing the science. So those are the numbers, um, kind of touching on why due diligence is important. And I'm just going to shine a light on some of the popular PDs. Class MA, very hard to talk about PD without talking about Class MA. Essentially, it allows you to go from this commercial use class to residential or stay within the commercial use class. Um, Again, whenever we're looking at permitted development, you always need to pay attention to the restrictions. That's actually the bit you care about. Uh, high level, it's got to have been in use class E for two years. It has to be under 1,500 square meters. Vacant for three months. However, there is some, uh, there's some good leeway on this. Um, I'm not going to get into what that is, but there's a few things that you can do to work around it. Constraints are a consideration, um, and you can't touch the outside. So this picture here, where we've got the shop front, you can't touch any of those. Those windows have to stay, that door has to stay, and those walls have to stay. If you want to change those, you're going to have to submit a full application specifically for those. Class ZA, this is occasionally mentioned. I see this all the time in PD webinars. Um, demolition of a block of flats or an office. 
there's a caveat to that office, um, to build a block of flats and go up two floors. Uh, again, more restrictions attached to this. However, the key thing to see here is only a 33% approval rating for these. Again, just getting the building wrong in the first place is likely to be the chance case for this. Class A, this is one of my favorites. Um, when I was working as a, a town planner, this is one of the first applications I submitted, although it didn't go under Class uh, A, it went under its own application. But essentially, it's being a bit more creative with the roof space. Can we go up? Um, again, restrictions attached to this. And again, 38% approval rating for these in the last year. It's still low, um, and it just has to be the building. The building has to be right. And one I thought I'd put in here for good measure, my personal favorite, Class Q, agricultural to residential. I do want to find one of these buildings myself, and I would like to live in one of them. Um, again, when I was working as a town planner, this was one of the first things that I did. I wrote a piece on this, uh, very specific about what you can do. Again, restrictions on this are can't touch the walls. You've got to have good walls. So if it's an old barn, you don't want something that's falling apart. It has to be structurally sound. Uh, and the roof has to be retained. Um, if you can pull those two off and you've got the right size, you're onto a bit of a winner. So that's the slides. Uh, very much touching on PD, a bit of what it is and some of the key ones there. Um, I mentioned that the reason I'm talking about this and doing this is because I've started a company called Searchland. Searchland is this. This is this is it, land of searching. Um, and it's very much on sourcing sites and actively trying to acquire things and put them in your portfolio. I'm just going to do a segment of what I would normally do for a demo. And what I'm going to look at is um, sourcing class MA sites. I'm then going to move on to office and I'm then going to move on to a bit of class Q. That's our agricultural. Um, so what I'm just gonna do is pick a council and uh, looks like we're going to Barnet. Actually, you know, I'll take that back, Enfield. And uh, so I said that part of the search land does is bring lots and lots of data together. And then what we do is wrap it up in tools. And so the tool that I'm on right now is what we call the class MA tool. We have gone through every building in the UK, every plot of land, there's about 25 million. Um, We've got the internal measurements, we've got the use class, we've got the constraints, uh, and we've decided whether it matches the criteria for class MA. Now, if I hit this button here, it's gonna show me in Enfield, because I've put Enfield, all of the buildings that match that criteria. And 21% actually already have planning, refused or, or planning application can be refused or approved. It's not yet known. Uh, just to show the scale of this, if I change this to the UK, We've got 28,000. That figure's gone up 1,000 um, in the last three months. Why that is, is because more buildings would have now been in use class E for two years. So this number will likely go up faster than it will go down. Um, back to Enfield, because I want to show you the buildings. And for this this tool here, this is, this is one of my favorites. This is very good because I can just zoom in and it will show me on a map where these buildings are. Again, it's anything that matches the criteria. However, we've built in this button here, Browse Opportunities. And what this will do is one by one, it will show me the building. So I can take a look at this. We get a bit of a breakdown of percentage profit. What that is, is we're working about the value of the building, what it costs to refurb, and what the local um, sales values are in there for new build and old build. High it is high level. Um, we we'll always encourage you to do your own due diligence, but it does give you a bit of a knee-jerk reaction. That's what we like. Um, we can see planning on here, uh, and we can take a look at the site. So I can go from here, and uh, yeah, just get a bit of a look. We can see what's going on here, and it's in a residential area, so we're starting to tick the boxes of things that we want to see. And what I would do at this point if I was site finding is I would save this, um, and I'd have a project called Class MA, which thankfully I do, and move on and go on to the next site. And like this, we can be very quick at assessing sites. Someone called this Tinder for Land, which I love. And we're just running through the sites. Again, looking through these, we can see that we've got an application on this. This might be too late for this under some of the old bits um, and just like that. So the way of thinking about this is it's 
very much data led. We mentioned that political development is all about doing your research. Um, so it's very much data heavy and it's putting sites in front of you a bit like you are, um, a bit like an agent has sourced them for you and you can screen them. Now, the, when, when we're actually talking about site finding, there is a process um, that actually accounts for this. And what I like to do is save them very quickly and then manage them in, a, forgive me for this board, no, no one's board should ever look like this. Um, save them into here and then do your due diligence. You can find the sites very quickly, but I still recommend, especially for PDs, looking at a few of the other bits um, on council portals, but we'll get you there very quickly. Run through these, and then when you're ready, you can send them letters. So I'm just gonna put these over here and send a letter. You can do it from the platform, so I'll do one. Uh, I should have put together a, a commercial letter, but we're gonna have to stick with my land one for now. Um, this is my old site finding company. Uh, I built a template, everything populates. This is the address we're talking about with my reference. Um, first name, which I'm just gonna change to home owner for now. And uh, map of the site. I wouldn't necessarily recommend putting a plan like this in for these sites. Um, plans are better for this land and you're trying to cut it up. But yeah, it also cost you a bit more. Anyway. Uh, if I add that to the, my campaign, I can send that from the platform. So this is the idea, lots of data, turn it into a tool that is very laser focused. We're just looking at, at class MAs for now, save the sites very quickly, do your homework and then get the letters out the door. What we're trying to do, the whole point of search then is, is trying to compress the amount of time it takes to find a site so that you have more time or the appropriate amount of time to actually deal with the landowners. You can't shorten that part of the process. That's just people. Uh, so that's what we're trying to do here. That's class MA. Um, here's another one I've done earlier. Um, again, looking in Enfield. And what I've done is I've actually, instead of going to the class MA tool, I've gone to custom search. Um, and what this allows you to do is string together more criteria. Uh, so I can search by use class. And in this case, I've put in officers I've put in a title area search because I want I want that type of office block that is um, that is almost already on residential style size sites. You know, not a big sort of complex, something that actually looks like it should be resi, but turns out as an office. Um, and I'm saying it doesn't contain any residential already, so I want office only ideally. Uh, same thing, browse opportunities, one by one, we can run through these, and this can just form part of the the uh, Office site finding. Now, what have we got here? Let's take a look at this one. I'm seeing air training corps. This is going to be fun. And this is actually what I was getting at. This looks residential by nature. Um, it is owned by the military. Uh, so it's probably going to have some strings attached. I doubt you'll be able to pull, pry this one away from them. But it's this sort of building that we're just being put in front of with very few clips go from there so again let's do a couple more this is the office approach um and we're taking a look like this let's take a look at this one because i can see we're in a residential street drop down and hey, it's facing the right way for the first time and again something like this this is an office block back here somewhere well screened you can get away with a few things development over here uh warrants further investigation i would say i would save that site um, right. So again, all I've happened, all that's happened there is I've strung together a few more criteria. Uh, and what I'm going to do is one last one, um, and I'll do this from scratch. And, um, we saw at the end class Q agricultural to residential. Uh, I don't know how many of you look at that or know that as a strategy or consider it. It's very different to the others, but principles are the same. Um, and we'll look in the veil of white horse. So again, yeah, that custom search. And I'll show you what a search looks like if you do it from the ground up. So instead of use class, because um, because agricultural is sui generis, which means in a category of its own, it doesn't have a use class. But what we can do is I can go to property classification, contains any, and this is, this is like a wild search. There's a lot going on here. Um, and I'm going to say horticulture, small holding, ooh, vineyard, 
Uh, slaughterhouse, maybe not. Um, ancillary building, let's throw in one of the, actually get rid of that. And I'll just do a wild so it's gonna do farm. Farm, non-residential building. So another one, agricultural land, look at that. So I'm now looking at land and buildings that are agricultural by purpose. That is the, that's the beginning of the class queue. Um, I could put in a filter for the internal measurement for class Q. You can't go beyond um, 865 square meters for one building. If I put in a size measurement here, it would probably throw the results because you can have multiple buildings. So let's hit search, 165. And uh, let's take a look at some of these. So again, we would be looking at these buildings. Um, it would be one of the buildings that gets converted. It could be some of these. Um, and what we can do here is if I change this to OS map, we can actually see the footprint of these buildings. So when it com comes to actually doing a bit of that further due diligence, I can measure these sites out, say that this is what I want to be looking at, and tack on this. There we go. Uh, that's our area. So we can actually go double the size. Um, not super fond of this building, if I'm perfectly honest. There's a lot going on. It looks very much active and in use. So we're going to quick fire through some others. And da, 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 da. this is all typical of looking at agricultural sites of this size. Uh, and here we go. What have we got here? Not much about the looks of it, huh? That's a shame. Um, however, if you're into your strategic land, oh, there we go, yeah, 29 applications. Um, right, here we go. So this is, this is probably a shed, probably not going to be that great. But this is kind of what we like to see, where it's a building. There's no real tracks. This doesn't look like it's being uh, commercially used. We've got residential in the area, although it's not that important. I don't think the building's going to be that nice. Uh, and hey, check that out. We've got some old satellite images because this is already being built. Uh, this is not class Q. This is just a full application. Um, you definitely can't get that many. Anyway, I'm going to actually stop there because um, otherwise I'll just be rambling on. But the the first part of the, the, the sort of session we just went is the idea of permitted development. It is always of interest to anyone in, involved in property and investment. It's always something to be aware of. It's constantly changing. Um, and although webinars like this exist and that you've got people like me talking in and around the subject area, something that I cannot stress enough is to actually read the general permitted development orders. It's a bit of a head scratcher to get your head around. It's a legal document. But there you will find the original document that everyone is looking at who's involved in the application. Those are your the council um, and any officers. And if you can wrap your head around that, you'll you'll be one step ahead. And then with a tool like Searchland, you actually have more data than the council. I used to work for Tunbridge Wells Council. They don't have much. Um, second part of that due diligence is use classes. Really familiarize yourself with use classes, what they are, how they work. Always a question of debate in um, committed development. And of the, I say always sometimes, uh, of the applications that I've seen that have been refused, it's often a matter of someone getting the use class wrong. Someone trying to convert a tire, a used tire shop because it's commercial. It's not considered commercial by the council. And so you have to figure out why. Basically back yourself would be the answer. So hopefully I didn't put anyone to sleep there for permitted development in the morning, but um, Hayley, nice to see you back. And yeah, that's, that was the bit. Brilliant. Um, I mean, Hugh, I know that you could probably talk to us about the site for forever. <laughs> and I'd be quite happy to sit there and listen as well. I mean, Searchland uh, Tinder for the property <laughs> developer is definitely a great kind of slogan, isn't it? Um, I definitely swipe right. <laughs> and uh, it's definitely a match for me. Um, so do you have... Um, are you still doing kind of demos, private demos based off the individual needs? And if somebody wanted to get access to your site, how do they go about that? Yeah, demos, we, we do, we always do demos and always will. Um, so demos are one-to-one. -one. What we do now, this sort of webinar segment is just like a, a quick and dirty look, his five sites, let's go. Um, 
we do demos you can book via our website you can actually just say i want to book a slot and then we can throw something around or you just shoot us an email uh they're one-to-one -one. they're about 30 minutes we spend about 10 minutes as a slightly consultative first part uh what have you done in the past what do you like doing what do you never want to do again what do you want to do more of um and then we'll help run you through the process um and show you the platform there's also a seven-day trial um and yeah, that's that's pretty much the process. So open for business would be the the so if you're not already part of Searchland, uh, get on, book you, demo in, get on the free trial. Um, I can tell you that the site is phenomenal. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. I'm really excited for Searchland and where you're going to go with the future and all the additional stuff that you've been talking about that will be added to the site. I think it's a phenomenal tool. Um, and uh, definitely um, uh, worth checking out. So do we have any questions for you or we're a bit quiet in the chat box today. Our numbers are smaller than normal. That's my fault. Well, my me and my team, <laughs> the royal kind of we, I suppose. <laughs> um, um, one, one question did come through on the document that I suggested to read. What I'll do is because there's quite a few, I'll, I'll find the the best one, the official one, and I'll see if we can get that circulated. Yeah. Um, I'll also give a couple of pages to check out on the PDs that I just went over. Brilliant. Um, That's great. Half, half uh, the challenge is finding the document. Everything yeah, else. Yeah, absolutely. Easy. Well, um, I, I mean, we can put the document on. So the replayers are always on our YouTube channel, which is Your Freedom Empire. And we can put the document if you want to send it over to make it easier for everybody to be able to download. Um, we can pop that in our um, in underneath the, the section so people can download it from the video um okay fantastic um so hugh I, I, unbelievable fantastic great how far you've come since the first time we spoke as well um i can just see search land growing strength to strength i really love what you guys are doing and uh i get far too excited about data but that's my problem <laughs> but um but no, you're you're very quick becoming one of my favorite uh, research tools and uh, and and I think will be a market leader definitely that's what we like to hear yeah brilliant and um, so well done to you and and the guys and the and the whole of your team and keep up the great work and uh, yeah I look forward to seeing you top bill and uh, and uh, the go-to tool for every property developer and investor out there that's the that's the plan yeah it's definitely a watch this watch this space um so i mean just for a timeline we launched in january um and then went from being you know four co-founders to double the size of the team november last year and then we'll be probably double that by the end of this year um i just want to do a quick close on something we're working on right now which i think is going to be really interesting is i quickly touched on the fact that we have a letter sending tool so you can send letters from a platform um we also have a planning applications alert feature so it will alert you of any planning applications that match um keywords size area things like that what we're going to do is going to blend the two tools together and have an automated letter sending feature that attaches to planning applications so if you're the type of person who wants to get those quick wins through an application that's already got a bit of traction set up an alert it says anything over say between three to five units uh, in this area on new land send this letter and that will just run in the background and they will send letters constantly um can screen them and go uh and that's ultimately where we want to be taking search land this idea of workflows i don't think finding sites should be the problem it should be you as a person dealing with a landowner uh, which has its own set of headaches <laughs> we can't do yeah. much to solve that but that's where we want to take it um perfect so ho hopefully that was that was informative um and i'm sure there'll be more more to follow and like i said i'll put a few documents in in one place and we'll get those shared as well Perfect. That's fantastic. Thank you ever so much for your time. And uh, we look forward to having you on again to introduce all of the new, new, new tools <laughs> as they're all coming out. Um, but uh, have a wonderful Friday. Um, I'm going to jump on my market update. You are uh, free to leave um, as long as you don't dead air, which I don't think that you have the... Uh, the power to do that so I think <laughs> don't think yeah. you, don't think, think you could oh you could okay well don't don't no, I do don't, that but no it's absolute pleasure Hugh great for our listeners and and for those that will um of course watch on the YouTube channel well, as well okay absolute pleasure I'm off um yeah I've got a nice wet 
commute to work now. So yeah. uh, <laughs> all the best and thanks, thanks for listening. Take Bye. care. Bye. Right. So that was Hugh at Searchland. I'm sure you can all agree that um, it is a phenomenal tool and definitely worth you having that one to one demo, seeing how it can fit with you and your business and having a uh, having that free trial as well so that you can see the benefits of the site and uh, where you are within your business right now. Um, if you love data, you will absolutely love the site. And Hugh and the team are just absolutely awesome and uh, just just great people. Um, so I, I'm really excited for Search Lens and I've been watching these guys um, over the last 12 months. And uh, and I, uh, it's just great. This is what we need as, as developers and investors, you know, these types of tools which help us make quick decisions and then um, act quicker. Um, and, uh, and we're stamping out the competition then. If we are first in the door, we can have that conversation. We can create the opportunity ourselves um, and drive our business at the, at the speed and flow we choose. Um, so that's what it's all about. Um, and Searchland have done a great job of pulling it all together and making it easier for us. Um, so, right, with that being said, uh, such a, a great, great session for me to follow on from, but I do have a very in-depth mar market update for you as well. Um, so we are going to jump on to um, our market update for this month. Um, I'll tell you now, I had to uh, 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 rewrite a lot of this yesterday, um, uh, but I'm going to jump off camera, go through the market update. If you have any questions, either about search land or anything like that, um, or anything in general to do with property um, or the update that we're covering, pop them in the chat box as we go through, um, and um, I will address all of the questions at the end. Please stay till the end as well, because we've got um, uh, some exciting announcements, and of course, we will be talking about our upcoming events also. So I'm going to pop off camera and uh, get on with the update. So what's hot and what's not? Um, there's uh, so many trending topics right now. And as I said, I was forced to uh, rewrite this update yesterday as a result of the announcements from Ofgem um, and uh, also the Bank of England policy announcements as well. Um, I've been spoiled for choice this month on what to really talk about. I sat down yesterday to pinpoint uh, what would be best or most useful to you. And I tell you now, my head was uh, uh, whizzing. I was pinging all over the place. The office staff were, were, were actually laughing at me yesterday <laughs> as I was watching the announcements live and voicing my opinion out loud. Um, I definitely said I told you so a few times and that definitely was dropped in <laughs> uh, or probably the, the, the word I used most yesterday as well. Um, of course, you know, I can say I told you so I was guessing and uh, really just giving my opinion. Um, but, um, uh, you know, perhaps a little bit uh, later than I originally anticipated, but in line with my previous forecasts anyway. Um, so moving on then. Um, so I've narrowed it down and we, uh, we're calling this month's update uh, Soaring Everything. That's going to be our, uh, our name for this update, um, which sounds a bit dramatic, but in most cases is 100% true. Uh, no matter, matter which way we turn, everything is up in the UK right now. Energy prices are up, inflation is up, interest rates are up and expected to rise even further this year. Buy to let mortgages up, activity in that sector up, house prices up, rents up, materials up, labour up, unemployment up, conveyancing fees up, et cetera, et cetera. Just on the conveyancing fees, um, they've increased by 21 percent since last year. So up again. Uh, so you can kind of get the gist of where I'm going here. People are starting to feel their purse tighten, and this is just going to get worse, in my opinion. Um, terms of trade shock, import prices, et cetera, et cetera, have all had a detrimental knock-on effect. Uh, the response to all announcements yesterday resulted in the public calling uh, the news um, or renaming it uh, Black Thursday. 
we are seeing a historic squeeze on households. Um, so uh, let's delve into that um, uh, or some of it or, or all of it if we have time. <laughs> um, so the Bank of England's announced yesterday that interest rates will rise from 0.25 to 0.5%. Um, this is the first back-to-back -back rise since 2004. And uh, further interest rates um, this year are, are imminent, in my opinion. Uh, the hope is uh, that the forecast will help stabilise inflation. Um, inflation is 5.4 at this moment in time. Peak inflation is forecasted. Um, it will be 7.25. We are in a vol volatile period with a cocktail of rise in taxes. We had um, uh, um, national insurance go up as well. So rise in taxes, uh, interest rate um, uh, rises, inflation, of course, rise in unemployment, which is rising and uh, uh, to five percent, growth slowing down, wage pressure in the economy. The list is endless and uh, overwhelming to many. I, I mean, as a business owner here in the UK, I can tell you, um, well, multiple business owner, I can tell you that I've had uh, within my businesses, employees feeling the squeeze as well and speaking to HR, requesting pay rises um, and or requesting the companies or my blessing to take on, you know, extra hours or weekend jobs or that second job just to increase their income uh, to cover the rising cost of living. Uh, all this uh, affects, of course, people's spending behaviour, consumer confidence and affordability, and in turn, that will have an overall effect on the economy. Um, so energy uh, bills uh, to rise as, as Ofgem brings forward price cap announcements as well. So also yesterday, for those of you um, that don't know who Ofgem are, uh, they are the Britain or Britain's independent energy regulator. Um, their role is to protect consumers now and in the future by working to deliver a greener, fairer energy system. Um, and their price cap is usually updated twice a year and tracks wholesale energy and other costs. Um, a record increase was announced yesterday in global gas price um, prices sees uh, energy price cap rise by 54%. Um, so whopping 54%. Uh, the consumers will see an increase of uh, between 693 to £708 per year on their bills, depending on if they are on a, a direct debit or a pay-as-you-go tariff. Um, under the price cap uh, mechanism, energy companies will be allowed to pass on these higher costs from April this year and um, uh, when the new level uh, comes into place. Over the last year, 29 energy companies have exited the market um, or been put into some sort of special administration in the wake of soaring uh, global gas prices, affecting around 4.3 million domestic customers. Now more than ever, we need to pay uh, or we need to be paying attention to the energy performance of our properties for some for so many different reasons. Um, you know, we've talked before about energy, energy performance rating, mortgageability, um, uh, whether you can let it out and all things like that. Um, but of course, there's other things we need to consider as well. Me and, uh, and my team um, have, have had several meetings about this uh, as I own a large HMO portfolio. And we've been waiting on this clarification to anticipate our next steps. We will now be forced on some of our properties to increase rents to cover the additional expenses to us um, uh, as landlords and protect our income as landlords. Where um, And if, of course, the bills are included, which with our HMOs is pretty much 99% of the time. So um, more news. Um, so unless you've been living under a rock, of which uh, I wouldn't blame you, um, <laughs> given the harsh realities of we have had to endure over the last two years. But if not, you would have heard about the levelling up term uh, here. It's very uh, here in the UK. And um, so this has been the government's slogan since 2019. Well, um, white paper was released this week. So let's have a look at that um, and um, uh, and um, see. 
see what it's all about. A, a, lot of, a lot of it, in my opinion, was regurgitating old news, but there were some interesting points we need to uh, take note of. So for those of you, again, that don't know, levelling up means giving everyone the opportunity to flourish. Um, and um, it is vital that the government perceive um, and uh, enhance the economic um, academic and cultural success of the UK's most productive towns and cities. Um, but it's also critical that they improve productivity, boost economic growth, encourage innovation, create good jobs um, and uh, enhance education and the social and cultural fabric of those parts of the UK that have stalled and not shared the same success as other parts of the UK. The government uh, or the UK government has made some progress towards spreading opportunities around the country um, since 2019. But it's very difficult at this moment in time to measure the success of these schemes so far. Um, the aim is, um, uh, is just that overall levelling up uh, the UK so that we don't have this north south divide, bringing equal opportunities uh, with everything from schooling, free further education, extra money to the NHS, universal credit, immigration, city and growth deals in Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, free ports, uh, towns fund and future high street funds, uh, uh, culture recovery, infrastructure investment, community ownership, which was interesting, um, green industrial revolution and uh, transaction to net zero and, and many, many, many other things. Um, and we don't have time to go through them all at this moment in time. Um, so as I said, white paper was released um, and this paper sets out the next stages in this program to level up the UK. Um, the program is very broad, uh, deep and uh, long term. It, it has to be rooted in the evidence demonstrating that a mix of facts is, is indeed um, to transform places and boost local growth. Strong innovation and a climate uh, conductive to private sector investment, better skills, improved transport systems, greater access to the culture, stronger pride in place, deeper trust, greater safe, safety and more resilient uh, intuitions. And um, so levelling up will require the government to boost productivity, pay, um, jobs, living standards by growing the private sector, especially in those places where they are lagging, spread opportunity and improve public services, especially in those places where they are weakest, restore a sense of community, local pride and belonging, especially in those places where they have been lost, and power uh, local leaders and communities, especially in those places lacking local agency. Leveling up is not about every part of the UK being the same or pitting one part of the UK uh, or the country um, against the uh, another, nor does it mean dampening down one success um, uh, or, uh, or dampening down the success of more prosperous areas. Um, indeed, by extending opportunity across the UK, um, uh, it, it can uh, re relieve pressure or relieve pressure. Sorry, on public services, uh, housing, and green fields in the southeast, and leveling up can improve well-being in the southeast by improving productivity in the north and the midlands. So leveling up is about growing the economic pie everywhere um, for everyone, not re-slicing it. I will put the white paper actually um, that was published in the link on our YouTube channel so that you can actually download it and have a read through it. I recommend you doing that because it's very, very informative. Um, you can get an executive summary or you can print out the full uh, document and it is free for you to, um, uh, to do that. Um, but we'll pop uh, the summary of everything that you need to know on our YouTube channel and you can download it from there. So by 2030, um, renters will have a secure path to ownership with a number of first time buyers increasing in all areas. And the government's ambition for uh, the number of non-decent rented homes to have fallen by 50 percent um, with the biggest Im improvements in those uh, lowest performing areas. Um, pride of place by 2030. So pride of place um, such as people's satisfaction with their town uh, centre and engagement in the local culture and community, 
will have risen in every area of the UK with a gap between top performing and uh, other areas closing. So cities, uh, towns and communities must be physically and digitally connected if they are to thrive um, with transport net networks in all major urban centres. By 2030, local public transport connectivity across the country will be significantly closer to the standards of London with improved services, simpler fares and integrated ticketing. So we have 60, uh, sorry, uh, 96 uh, billion integrated rail plan, improving the rail network in the North and the Midlands and uh, invest 24 billion in our busiest roads and motorways, 5.7 billion in city region uh, sustainable transport settlements and 5 billion for buses, cycling, walking networks, etc. Um, together, um, this will bring local public transport connectivity across the country um, and pull, pull everything together, really. Um, and it will enhance, uh, you know, the, the plan will be to enhance digital connectivity along with the transport links and everything like that. So by 2030, the UK government and private sector will deliver nationwide uh, gigabyte capable broadband and 4G coverage and um, with 5G coverage for the majority of the population as well. Um, so I can see what they're doing here and it, it, it all makes sense. It's a very, very interesting read. Um, this will of course help address the disparities of low pay seen in areas across the country. The government will continue to increase the national living wage. That's going up. Um, I believe in April to £9.50, um, which is a huge uplift um, uh, uh, um, and not in line with normal. Um, but uh, it is actually, um, uh, you know, uh, almost in line with inflation as well. So it is a good thing. Um, but meanwhile, the introduction of um, uh, point based uh, immigration systems is coming in gives the UK greater control over who comes into the country based on their skills. Um, aligning this, of course, um, uh, to the needs of the economy. Um, the support of the private sector is essential to deliver on their missions. Uh, the UK government is committed to enabling and empowering the private sector to increase investment, jobs and growth at a local level. We have uh, the decent home standard as well. Um, so new legislation to improve the quality and regulation of social housing will be introduced. The government will publish a landmark white paper in spring um, to consult on introducing a legal um, binding decent home standard in the private rented sector um, for uh, for the first time ever um, and explore a national landlord register and of course bring forward other measures to reset that relationship between tenants and landlords and one of those things we spoke many times before um, with the renters reform bill which is the abolishment of the section 21 no fault evictions and all of that will uh, will come into uh, play together so we should hear more about that in spring um, but a very very interesting week for the UK. Um, change is definitely near and 100% on the cards. Um, but remember, fear equals opportunity and the educated investor will always win every time. I still think we will see a stable housing market through uh, to the last quarter of this year, uh, but with growth slowing down dramatically. I think the average person's confidence in the overall economy will be swayed. Um, and I think that this will be enough for them to reconsider that potential upgrade um, uh, or moving house. Um, I think many first time buyers will hang tight to wait and see a clearer picture um, and more confidence in their affordability. Uh, and of course, this trickle and slowdown in demand will level out the current lack of supply um, and uh, even out uh, the demand and have a ripple effect on the housing market. I think as a result, we will likely see some areas of the UK fall in value towards the back end of this year, uh, carrying through then out into 2023. 
we ask a, uh, or I, I put out yesterday after all of the announcements to our mentors and our trainers, etc., to kind of get their view. Um, and um, some of them replied. So we asked our mentors and speakers their thoughts on some of, uh, uh, you know, on, on some of them. I can't read some of them out, especially Glenn Newson. And those of you that know him <laughs> will know why. He's the rebel of the group for sure. Um, but Paul, of course, agrees with me. Um, so that's my husband. Happy wife, happy life. Uh, Wendy's input was parting words from a tax advisor quoting, uh, you're all about to get hammered, so be prepared for that. Uh, Pip, who is our super positive uh, um, ace guy, um, he said, when the market changes, opportunities arise. I 100% agree with that positive outlook. Um, we do do the opposite to everybody else. You know, when everybody else is buying, we sell. When everybody else is selling, we buy. And uh, we play that game very well. Um, uh, so uh, Pip said change is good. Um, um, and uh, last but not least, I'll leave you with our newest YFE uh, family member, Mr. John Howard. He says, and, and I quote, uh, with the news of interest rates uh, going up again, it's not the fact that people will be paying more interest on the mortgage um, or their mortgages. Uh, that it, That's the issue here um, immediately, because 90 percent of people are now on fixed terms between two and five years, which means for many people, they will have the time to adjust to paying the higher interest rates. Um, unlike back in 2009, when only 44% were on fixed uh, rate mortgages. However, when you combined um, uh, this uh, interest rate rise with the news of energy prices soaring in and inflation, it means many people are fe uh, feeling nervous and negative. Uh, this will translate to the property market with people looking to hold on to their existing property rather than move and potential uh, first time buyers waiting nervously to see whether they're things will settle back down. Uh, with further interest rates uh, in, increases happening this year, um, that's not going to uh, likely happen anytime soon. So um, that's really our our market updates, our thoughts on the news that we had come in in yesterday. Um, it's definitely a year of change, um, you know, from legislation, um, uh, new laws, uh, tenancies, energy performances, all things like so much coming in that we need to be aware of. Um, and, and that's what we're here for. Um, so before we jump on to our next events um, and take some questions, um, ending this section and summarizing, uh, I think fear equals opportunity and change is imminent. Um, you want to survive, you have to be first, uh, be ready and adapt and change. The educated investor, as I said, will always win. Um, so firstly, um, uh, I, you know, just, just moving on, I, I want to say... Um, Thank you to everyone that attended our property success convention last weekend. It was an absolute pleasure. We truly enjoyed it. Um, and, um, and of course, the excellent feedback that we've had as well and all of the compliments on our training style and delivery. It, it's why we do what we do. And we're humbled by the overwhelming feedback. So thank you again to all that attended. And thank you for taking the time to um, pay compliments to our training and put positive feedback through to us. Um, I also want to say congratulations to Mike Dooley, who I know is on the call at this moment in time for win winning the golden ticket draw. Um, so he's uh, won some free train well it's not free but it is free for him because he's won <laughs> um, so he's won some training with us so looking forward to uh helping you uh through that mike and uh and adding value to you as well and lastly um we have another accelerator program starting next week um which uh we're super excited to get working with the successful candidates um and i know um you are already and uh, raring to go. Um, we will be announcing the winners of the last uh, challenge um, on March's show. So make sure that those of you that were part of the accelerator, you tune in because we will be announcing the winner. Entries are now closed um, and um, we are uh, and all, all entries are now with the judges. So good luck to all of you. Um, and uh, in my eyes, you are all winners to me. So um, 
If you missed property question time last night as well, um, you can tune in and watch uh, the replay on our YouTube channel. Um, it was myself um, and uh, Stephen Galpin, of course, um, on Sky um, 191, a, a, a guest that I've never sat down with before before but a really really great guy um david uh, galman who is one of the largest uh, private developers in london to date um so really really interesting show definitely worth you having a look at that and watching the replay on our youtube channel we are again on sky 191 next week that's at episode 69 myself and john howard are a part of the expert panel again we had a uh, great fun a uh, great number by the way but we had where me and John uh, uh, get it uh, get a little bit heated debate about the leveling up fund and the government infrastructure plans and uh, uh, we, we we it's all in good uh, good uh, fun and uh, we, we we thoroughly enjoyed fil filming that show as well so that is um, next week um, on Tuesday at uh, eight o'clock. Um, if you don't have Sky, um, you can pop onto our YouTube channel. We will have the premiere on there. You can click um, uh, 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 like and subscribe, of course, but click the premiere and it will notify you when we go uh, live and you can watch it through uh, YouTube. Um, if you haven't already, visit our website. Um, so for those of you that have, we've got a brand new website now. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, it's uh, I'm very, very proud of it. Uh, but for those of you that haven't visited our website, pop along to www.yourfreedomempire.co.uk and check us out. Um, and to finish off uh, notifications, um, <laughs> the next support alumni is on the 18th of February at 9am. And of course, the next at home with hey Hayley is on the 4th of March. So I'm going to jump back on camera. I know that we've got some um, questions coming through. Um, so we'll take some questions now. Um, and so Mike's saying, uh, thanks. It was a great weekend. Looking forward to chatting soon. Um, it was a pleasure to have you on, uh, Mike. Uh, some fantastic questions and uh, uh, super driven as well, which we always love. Um, so there's a few questions in the chat box. If you do have any, pop them in. Um, so um, Mike's asking, will leveling up be using UK investment or will foreign investment still play a vital role? I think uh, foreign investment is going to be even more important to accomplish all the aims. And um, so there will be uh, uh, so will there be any help for us? Um, so. I I'm not sure on the health. We're de I think it's going to be um, a hybrid between the two. So they're, they're definitely international um, investment coming into the UK. Um, you know, a large part of uh, the development in the UK relies on that. Um, so I, I, I'm not sure on any help that will be there, but there are more lenders that coming into the marketplace. Um, I think it is more uh, visible now more than ever. Um, uh, you know, coming out of COVID, um, uh, endemic is what is, 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 is that the word? I'm not sure. <laughs> um, uh, that um, uh, the UK does rely a lot on internationals investing in, in the UK. So um, um, I see that as a positive. It's great that it's been recognised. And of course, um, uh, you know, uh, there, there's opportunity there for you as well. Um, so hopefully that answers your question, Mike. Um, but uh, so I can't see any more. Uh, oh, so Mike's asking another question. Um, so really interesting. Uh, can you repeat the legal documents you recommend uh, to read? Um, I missed that, um, Mike, but I'll get on to you and, and uh, ask him what document he's referring to and we'll get that in the chat box as well so um in the chat box on the youtube channel the you the the video will go up later on today what we will do is we'll get that document from you um on um uh, pd so the extensive document that they that the guys at searchland have put together um we'll also put the leveling up fund um uh, or the leveling up uh, white paper uh, executive summary in there as well um and then this document the the or, or in the chat box what what document uh, hugh was referring to so hopefully you guys and girls enjoyed that that update i'm going to quickly run through now with you uh the um 
events that are coming up. Um, so we have, uh, so this is last call for the phenomenal course uh, run by John Howard through, of course, Your Freedom Empire, held live and virtually. Um, so John is a phenomenal guy, um, uh, four decades in the industry, um, uh, four phenomenal books um, that you get uh, signed as part of his training. Um, uh, there's not much he doesn't know. So if you are looking to move into development, um, you are looking um, to get access to his joint venture fund and work with him um, and um, uh, looking to just be a competent, confident developer. Uh, this is definitely the course for you. It's phenomenal training, excellent value for money. We have um, um, a course running or a seminar running this uh, next Saturday, which is the 12th and 13th of February. Um, uh, and that is live in person held at Your Freedom Empire's headquarters in the north of Birmingham, um, or virtually for those of you that are international and there's still travel restrictions. Um, so uh, get get on to the QR code is on the screen now. Um, scan it, have a look at what in, what's uh, included. Um, and uh, if it's for you, book a call in if you'd like to ask any questions or reach out to admin at yourfreedomempire.co.uk. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll get you sorted and uh, seat uh, secured. Uh, you don't want to miss this. Um, this is very, very relevant right now. It's definitely where um, uh, the money is being made. Um, and um, fully comprehensive with uh, excellent feedback on the courses that have been delivered so far. Um, so get yourself booked. Uh, next up, we have, of course, the Property Success Convention. Um, that is um, uh, our next Property Success Convention is the 29th, um, 28th and the 29th of May. Of course, you can uh, attend live in person or virtually. Um, we cover all things property, how to source deals, what strategies are out there, what's working right now. We run numbers. We tell you and teach you how to structure deals from a finance perspective. We look at research. We introduce you to some of our power team. Um, you have two experts that are with you um, nine uh, till um, around 5 p.m. Uh, two full days of training. You can walk away from this training and understand the industry you are stepping in. And of course, we will be talking to you about mentorship programs and additional training that you may want to undertake with us. But there is no obligation to there's we're not strong upsells or anything like that no drop prices on the day we're very very transparent very open it is two jam-packed full informative days if you are interested to get into property or even if you are in property we have excellent feedback from many of you that have actually been in investing for a few years um, and now looking to kind of move into different areas of investment and and learn so so much from the the two days so whether you are just starting out or whether you're actively investing um, and uh, and you just want to brush up or move forward um, in a different uh, direction. This is definitely the training for you. Um, so get signed up um, and uh, hopefully we'll see you uh, live. If not on vir virtual is equally as uh, rewarding. Um, and uh, we had a great turnout uh, virtually um, on our last event and some excellent, excellent feedback. So get booked onto that course. And then, of course, um, I, I've already gone through this with you. So we have uh, you can watch the replay from last night on our YouTube channel, um, Your Freedom Empire um, on Property Question Time. And if you wanted to catch it on Sky TV, we are on a different episode uh, next week on uh, Tuesday at 8 a.m. 8 p.m. Sorry. <laughs> and if you don't have Sky, of course, you can watch that live on our YouTube channel. Um, and for those of you, and we've, we've, we're doing lots of these, I think so many people um, are um, nervous about what strategies they should be doing, perhaps going through, you know, um, a, a deal that um, they've done uh, outside of, of course, 
our training organization, etc. Um, so I think you don't have to be part of your freedom empire or have purchased any of our training or mentorship programs in order to have access to this call. Um, so we have people that call in from other training organizations that want our view and opinion on what they are doing um, and, um, and just have situations that they want to talk through with an expert that has uh, you know additional feedback on on what they should do um, and uh, their business etc so if you are in that position you would like to uh, use a mentor for 30 minutes and uh, as a soundboard to kind of get some feedback from them book these calls in they're very very useful again there is no upsell or anything like that it is a genuine 30 minute consultation call um, you can send um, uh, you can scan the QR code on the screen right now we're getting very techy aren't we now <laughs> As, um, or you can actually visit our website and uh, book a free calling um, uh, from our website you can do that through the education hub on the drop down menu um, so very very easy um, and um, of course again we do these webinars for you guys um, so this is this is free it's forever free it's very much uh, to benefit you in your business and um, your property investment journey we hope that you get great value from it we get excellent feedback um, so fingers crossed that's still the case um, but if you do have any questions and you can't watch live and you you are one of the people that watch on YouTube which is a lot we get a lot of people that watch on YouTube because of them being international, different time zones, etc. Pop a question to us. If you want your question answered, we will always prioritize the live um, questions, but the questions that come through via email, we will still get through um, time permitting, um, but we will get those questions answered to you um, manually if we can't do it live as well. So pop your questions through to uh, admin at yourfreedomempire.co.uk. And of course, this is live. It is for you. It is free. It's to your benefit. If you have a topic that you would like to cover, let us know. We're, we're very much open to suggestion and we're very much wanting uh, you to achieve out of this time that you're giving us what you're looking to achieve. So um, if you have any suggestions, pop it again through to admin at Your Freedom Empire. But I am going to say um, thank you ever so much. Again, apologies to those of you that missed because of the admin error and the incorrect um, start time. I can only apologize. We are human and uh, sometimes we make mistakes. Um, but I hope that you watch the replay on our YouTube channel. And again, apologies if at any time was wasted um, uh, for you. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed the show. I've absolutely loved today. Um, yesterday was a phenomenal day um, uh, for, for um, updates and um, it was just too much for me to kind of take in. I, I had a bit of a headache yesterday, but I'm going to say thank you ever so much for your time this morning. It was an absolute pleasure as always. Um, I'm going to love you and leave you. Say have uh, a wonderful weekend, an excellent month. Make it count. Take action. Uh, remember, action is key. Um, and uh, I look forward to seeing you all again next month. Goodbye for now.